Welcome to Chapter in 10, your ultimate guide to mastering Class 7 chapters in just a few minutes, ready to uncover the science behind a superhero's world. Ever asked why we use strong metals for everything from kitchen utensils to carrying the mighty power of electricity, yet we need non-metals to package our food and contain that electric power safely? Let's find out in the fourth chapter from your curiosity book, The World of Metals and Non-Metals. This chapter is divided into two parts, and this is the second part of our journey. Today, we're diving deep into it through a fantastic Quanda challenge that will help you master this chapter. So grab your thinking caps, get ready to guess the answers, and let's spark our brains. Let us switch on our minds and see what we can discover. Let's start with metals. Which metal is commonly used to make food packaging materials? Well, aluminium is often used to make food packaging materials. It's a good choice because it's cheaper and its thin sheets can be easily folded into any shape to wrap food. Now let's move to something a bit more explosive. Which metal catches fire when it comes in contact with water? It's sodium. This metal reacts very strongly with water and even oxygen in the air, creating a lot of heat, which can cause it to catch fire. That's why it's kept in kerosene. Next are aluminum and copper examples of non-metals used for making utensils and statues. True or false? No, that's false. Aluminum and copper are actually metals, not non-metals. Do metals form oxides that turn blue litmus paper red when combined with oxygen? True or false and why? No, that's false. When metals combine with oxygen, they usually form basic oxides. Basic solutions turn red litmus paper blue, not blue litmus paper red. Is oxygen a non-metal that is essential for breathing or respiration? Yes, that's true. Oxygen is a non-metal and all living things need it to breathe and survive. Now back to our kitchens. Are copper vessels used for boiling water because they are good conductors of electricity? No, that's false. Copper vessels are used for boiling water because they are good at conducting heat, which helps the water boil fast. Even though copper can conduct electricity, that's not the reason it's used for cooking. Why are only a few metals suitable for making jewellery? What special properties do they have? Only a few metals like gold and silver are good for making jewellery because they are very shiny a property called lustrous and can be easily shaped into thin sheets which is called malleable or drawn into thin wires which is called ductile. This allows jewelers to create beautiful and detailed designs. Now think about the wires that bring electricity to our homes. Which metal is used in electrical wiring? You got it, it's copper. Its excellent conductivity makes it the go-to choice for safely carrying electricity. And speaking of malleability and ductility, which metal is the most malleable, meaning it can be easily flattened, and ductile, meaning it can be drawn into thin wires? Gold is the most malleable and ductile metal. All right, let's swing back to non-metals and their essential roles in life, which non-metal is something that living organisms absolutely cannot survive without. It's oxygen again. It's that vital non-metal that sustains all life on our planet. We simply can't function without it. Which non-metal found in fertilizers helps plants grow healthy when added to the soil? Plants grow healthy when fertilizers containing nitrogen are added to the soil. Which non-metal is used to purify water? Chlorine is used in water purification. Purification means making something clean and free from harmful things. Now let's observe the fascinating differences between how metals and non-metals behave. What happens when oxygen reacts with magnesium? When oxygen reacts with magnesium, it forms a white powder called magnesium oxide. If you mix this powder with water, the solution becomes basic, which means it turns red litmus paper blue. What happens when oxygen reacts with sulfur? When oxygen reacts with sulfur, it forms a gas called sulfur dioxide. If you dissolve this gas in water, it creates an acidic solution, which means it turns blue litmus paper red. What is the main difference between what happens when oxygen reacts with magnesium versus sulfur? 
The main difference is that when oxygen reacts with a metal like magnesium, it forms a basic substance, oxide. But when oxygen reacts with a non-metal like sulfur, it forms an acidic substance, oxide. Time for another practical application. Imagine you're in the kitchen. Which material would be your best choice to make a pan that is most suitable for boiling water and why? To make a pan for boiling water, you should choose iron or copper. These are metals, and metals are very good at conducting heat. This means they can quickly transfer the heat from the stove to the water, making it boil fast. Materials like sulfur, coal, plastic, wood and cardboard are not good at conducting heat, so they would not work well for a cooking pan. Let's talk about rust, that tricky enemy of iron. Imagine you have three iron nails and you dip one in oil, one in water and one in vinegar. Which iron nail will not rust and why? The iron nail dipped in oil will not rust and here's the reason. Rusting happens when iron comes into contact with both air, specifically oxygen, and water at the same time. The oil creates a protective layer around that iron nail stopping it from touching either air or water so it simply cannot rust. It's all about that protective barrier. Now let's recap. How do the different properties of metals help us use them in everyday life? Give me a few examples. Metals are incredibly versatile because of their special properties. They're strong and hard, perfect for tools, farming equipment and building strong structures like bridges. Their shininess, luster, makes them great for beautiful jewellery and decorations. They're malleable, meaning they can be flattened, like aluminium foil for wrapping food. They're ductile, so they can be pulled into thin wires, which we use for electrical wiring and even more intricate ornaments. They're sonorous, they make that ringing sound when hit, which is why they're used for bells. And finally, they're excellent conductors of both heat and electricity, which is why we use them for cooking pots and pans and for all our electrical wiring. But non-metals are just as vital, even if they seem less flashy sometimes. How do the different properties of non-metals help us use them in everyday life? Non-metals play crucial roles too. Oxygen is absolutely essential for us to breathe and for all living things to survive. Carbon is the basic building block of all living things, found in all our energy-giving foods. Nitrogen is used in fertilizers to help plants grow strong and healthy. Chlorine is used to clean and purify our water, making it safe to drink. Iodine is used as an antiseptic to clean cuts and wounds. And a very important property. Most non-metals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. This is super useful for making handles of cooking pots, like wood, or covers for electrical tools like plastic or rubber, protecting us from burns and shocks. All right, one more thought on protecting iron from rust. We know zinc is great for this, forming a protective layer. Since sulfur doesn't react with water, could it also be used to protect iron from rusting in the same way as zinc? Justify your answer. No, absolutely not. Sulfur cannot be used in the same way as zinc. Even though sulfur doesn't react with water, it's a non-metal that is brittle. Remember, brittle means it breaks easily into pieces. It simply cannot be flattened into a thin, strong and continuous coating like malleable metals like zinc can. Zinc forms that vital protective layer that stops both air and water from reaching the iron, which is essential to prevent rust. Sulfur just crumbles. And finally, a question about how artisans work with metals. Have you ever seen an ironsmith heating iron before they make tools? Why is heating necessary in this process? What does it do to the iron? An ironsmith heats iron before making tools because heating makes the iron soft. When iron is hot, it becomes much easier to hammer and shape into all sorts of different tools. This amazing property, being able to be shaped when heated, is part of a metal's incredible malleability. That's how they create those incredible designs from hard metal. Excellent work, everyone. You've tackled some tricky questions about metals and non-metals. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep learning. This video is part of our comprehensive Class 7 Science Curiosity playlist 
so make sure to check out the full series for more exciting lessons. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. For smarter, faster learning, make sure you subscribe to Chapter in 10. See you next time.